we came across a pool and I'd never seen so many hippos in one pool before. They seem quite relaxed, but I had to be wary as uh, hippos are very dangerous and they also had calves in the water. The calves were very inquisitive, coming closer to inspect the vehicle. The mothers kept them in, in check, cutting them off if they came too close to us. As it got later in the afternoon, the sky in front of us got steadily darker and a storm was definitely approaching. There was one hippo in particular, its body behind its head was enormous and it dwarfed the other hippos around it. You could see the strength of the wind as the spray blew across the, the top of the water. Then uh, the rain started. The hippos, they didn't stop their restlessness. And I think this was because of the storm and all the lightning and thunder behind them. One of the bigger hippos was stirring at the water and flicking his tail, spraying water and dung uh, behind him. By this time the wind was blowing so hard that the vehicle was shaking and it was making it almost impossible to film. So we decided to pack up. We've had very little rain in the last three months or so. The forest is drying out, but in this meadow, the top corner is a spring. And all around there are birds and other animals coming down to drink. Some female sambar picking their way down towards the water. A white handed gibbons singing away frequently, especially throughout the morning. All manner of birds around here, vernal hanging parrots squawking and squeaking and wheeling around the whole time. I've noticed often that when the parrots or pigeons are down to drink, other wildlife will also come in. Quite a few deer have come by I suspect that they're using the birds as lookouts in that sense. This is a muntjac, a male. See the little antlers there protruding on the head. Something I've noticed is that none of these animals keep their head down for more than a few seconds. And now, here comes the big male sambar. Sambar are not difficult to see in Thailand. There are some places where they're almost tame in uh, some of the parks. Uh, and in the places where they're not tame, if you see them, they see you there, they're off. It must be an extraordinary life, in fact, when you think about it, to be living amongst drinking the same water and living in the forest with your own predators that might be behind the next rock, the next tree at any moment.
It was late evening, so the birds seemed to be returning from feeding, and the air was just full of adult gannets that were trying to find their landing spots on the island. How they do this, I'm not quite sure, because it just seems totally random, but apparently each bird has its own little nest pile that it returns to at the end of each day. There were a few adults which were still on eggs, and I guess this is just a late season phenomenon. A little nest pile serving to cradle the egg, and the gannet just plonking itself on top of these to protect them from the beady eyes of the gulls that patrol nearby. There were also quite a few fluffy white chicks, and these are also probably lagging a little bit in the breeding cycle. And a lot of these birds were just in the process of losing this fine down that covered their bodies. And then you see the in-betweeners, that sort of geeky teenage stage of juvenile gannet where they're not quite sure what's going on. They're not black, they're not fluffy, and some of these quite ugly little individuals are the ones, I guess, that are shedding the fluff that you can see flying through the air. There's a lot of preening going on, and I imagine this has something to do with shedding these baby feathers, the adult birds helping to preen the dark juveniles. And every now and again you see a funny little kickback, a little white tuft on the head of, of one of the adolescent birds. And then as the sun begins to go down, the birds start returning to the island in their hundreds, landing in their predestined places, haggling for space. And I guess the purpose of this is just to deliver food to their very demanding offspring. Here you can see almost like a jousting session going on, this baby trying to prize open the bill of an adult bird and eventually succeeding, sticking its head right down the throat. And I think to these juveniles, the adults are nothing more than fish vending machines. The activity lasts well into the evening as the sun goes down, and it's only when this huge orange ball drops below the horizon that things begin to get quiet on Malchas Island. <laughs> 